In previous module, I gave you an example of how enzymes can lower the energy requirement of a reaction. Cells cannot create energy. They have to utilize energy by breaking certain types of bonds. And enzymes facilitate that process. In order to understand how enzymes work, we need to establish some rules about energy. So let's talk about energy. Physicists describe energy as the capacity to do work. There are two different types of energies, potential energy and kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion such as light, electricity, heat. Potential energy is the state or energy of state or position. For biologists, it is important because it is also the energy that is stored between high energy bonds. For example, carbon-carbon bonds or carbon-hydrogen bonds. Energy can be converted from one form to another. For example, if a river is running, it has kinetic energy because it's energy of motion. We put the dam in the way of the river, we will block the flow of water. Now that kinetic energy has converted into potential energy. We release water from the dam. It helps us turn the turbines and generate electricity. We get electricity in our home. This electricity can be converted into different forms. For example, light, heat, uh, mechanical energy of the fan. So energy can be converted from one form to another. So what are the rules that dictate energy conversions? The first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. However, energy can be transformed from one form to another, but no new energy can be produced or it cannot be destroyed. That's the first law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics states that every time there's an energy conversion, we lose certain amount of energy, it becomes unavailable to do work. So no process is 100% efficient. Although we are transforming one type of energy into another type of energy, the energy is neither being created nor destroyed. However, the process, since it's not 100% efficient, part of that energy is lost due to conversion process. So the basically what we are saying that is that whenever conversion takes place, part of that energy that is lost, we can call it unusable energy. And the energy that can be used to do work is called the usable energy. We describe unusable energy, the energy which cannot be used to perform work as entropy. And the energy that can be used to do useful work is called delta G or and it is called free energy. So if we uh, use this, this second law and we can come up with this equation, total energy equals usable energy plus unusable energy. If we want to write it in form of an equation, it basically becomes H, the total energy. H is representing the total energy. G, the energy that can be used to do useful work that, can be, that we can use. And S, the unusable energy, or as I have said, it's called entropy. In order to make, in order to make this equation, we have to put a constant in it. The capital T here represents absolute temperature. So our, our equation becomes H equals G plus T S. The total energy of the system equals usable energy plus unusable energy. The total energy of the system is, is represented by H and it's called enthalpy. So since we are interested in usable energy, the energy we can use to perform useful work, we can rearrange this equation using simple algebra. The equation, when we rearrange it, it, it reads as G equals H minus T S. We'll continue with that in the, in the next module.